Hello, how are you doing? The shortlist for this year's International Booker Prize has been announced and these are the six books. So I'm going to give my reaction to this, uh, look at the list as a whole, and give short summaries and some information about each of the titles because I know some people only start reading a book prize list when it gets down to the shortlist because reading a long list is quite a big commitment. Although this isn't such a short shortlist as you can see in terms of page length. Uh, the two longest titles titles that were on the long list are also included on the short list. Some really big, thick, chunky books. And it's actually even longer if you consider that Jan Foss's book is part of a trilogy. So if you read the entire trilogy, it's it's even longer. But I'd love to know if you're planning to read any of these books, uh, if what you think about the short list, uh, if you're disappointed or, or happy with it, um, please let me know about that in the comments below and we can have a discussion about it. And yeah, I'd say overall, looking at this short list, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Uh, well, I'm, I'm happy and sad um, if I'm allowed to have both of those uh, emotions at the same time because I'm happy that there are two titles on it that I've read and I really loved both of them. Um, they both happen to be the yellow books on this list, Heaven and Elena Knows, uh, but uh, also happy that uh, this is pushing me to read you know, some of these longer titles because it is quite an intimidating experience looking at a book that's over 800 pages long and getting to it. Uh, but I think, you know, it being on this list is saying that these are books really worth the time and concentration effort to, to actually read them. Uh, so, and I, it's giving me an excuse, you know, to finally get to them. So I'm happy about that, but also like a bit sad that uh, the, there are some titles on the long list that I also really love that I, I, aren't being included on the shortlist. Uh, so I'd read seven out of the 13 uh, titles that, that were long listed. And I am really sad that um, both Paradise by Fernando Melchor and uh, Love in the Big City uh, by Sang Yun Park um, aren't included on the shortlist. I, I love both of these books um, so much. I, I think they're, they're so powerful and strong. So I'd really encourage you to read these books um, still. And also I'd really enjoyed some other titles on the long list, but uh, but yeah, on the, the short list, I, I'm really happy to see those books and excited to get to the other ones. So looking at the, the short list, um, I think it's quite exciting that there are six books from six different countries. So we get a novel from Argentina, some short stories um, from South Korea, a uh, novel from India, um, from Norway, from Japan, and from Poland. Uh, so yeah, six different countries, six different languages uh, across three different continents. Uh, it's really exciting to see that there's a collection of short stories um, included in this list and uh, also that a lot of these books seem to consider like religion um, in quite a, a strong and personal and powerful way. Um, I think particularly in the, the books of Jacob and, uh, and uh, New Name, uh, Jan Foss's books, his work really deals with uh, religious ideas and themes, um, also connected with art. And uh, the, the daughter in Elena Knows um, is a very religious person. And uh, I think also uh, Tomb of Sand deals with uh, religion in, in some ways as well. So yeah, that just seems to be a theme that's kind of connecting uh, the, the different books. But yeah, I think it's a really exciting shortlist overall. So I'm going to go through and talk about each of the individual titles now. First is Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, translated from the Spanish, Spanish, Spanish by Francis Riddle. And this is a story of an older woman who is in the late stages of Parkinson's and her daughter, uh, who is also her primary carer, has died. That That's not a spoiler. That happens before the, the novel started. And she is found hanging uh, from a belfry and police have ruled this uh, suicide. But Elena isn't buying that. She thinks she was murdered and she's on a quest to find out what really happened. And she goes to visit a woman that she believes can assist her in her inquiries. Uh, but this is a real struggle for her to go on this journey to visit this woman because her mobility is so restricted because of her Parkinson's and she has to take medication on a very strict schedule um, in order to just be able to walk and move. And 
this story is so powerful and, and moving because it draws you completely into Elena's experience. You really see through her point of view what the world is like and what her experiences are like because of this incredibly debilitating disease. Like literally she is only able to, her neck muscles stop working. She So quite often she'll just see the ground, she sees people's shoes and that is the viewpoint you have because her vision is so restricted because of of this uh, disease and and uh, and it's so incredible how it does that and, and really moving but also it's a mystery because of what happened you you wonder what really did happen to the daughter and you you follow the story and and piece together you know what really occurred and uh, so yeah it's it's such an incredible story it's uh, so it's making like large political points as well as being really thrilling and moving and involving and emotional and it's just so good. Cursed Bunny by Bora Chun and translated from the Korean by Anton Her. And these are short stories which uh, delve into to horror. Um, some are kind of ghost stories, others are more in a science fiction mode. So quite fantastical uh, situations and subject matter but also deal with real uh, serious subjects and political subjects to do with uh, the patriarchy and capitalism. Uh, the title story, Cursed Bunny, uh, is about uh, the, the grandfather of the narrator. Uh, he curses these objects which he sells to other people, including a lamp that's shaped like a bunny rabbit uh, that he gives to a family, and it's about the outcome of these curses uh, that he places upon these objects. So yeah, sounds quite a, like a wild and entertaining collection. Tomb of Sand by Geetanjali Shri and it's translated from the Hindi by Daisy Rockwell and this is a novel about an 80 year old woman who's recently lost her husband and amidst her grief she starts to re-examine her life and physically re-examine places uh, from her past including traveling to Pakistan uh, where she had a very traumatic childhood amidst partition and if you didn't know a partition occurred in 1947 it's when British India was divided into India and Pakistan and this caused a lot of trauma and displacement for a lot of people uh, so it's about that journey about her relationship with her daughter and um, how this uh, this woman uh, is kind of re-examining um, her, her position in society um, as a mother, as a daughter, as a woman, as a feminist, and uh, about the new occurrences um, and encounters that, that she has. And I personally love reading novels that are about characters um, that are you know late in their lives and so I'm really excited to delve into this novel even though it's over 700 pages long I, I think it's going to be such a great journey. A new name Septology 6 and 7 by Jan Fossa and it's translated from the Norwegian by Damien Searles and yes this is the third book in a trilogy of books that have been being published by Fitzcarraldo editions uh, over the past few years and there are two books uh, by Fitzcarraldo Editions on this shortlist and I know some people are confused like why are these books just blue and blank um, but all of uh, Fitzcarraldo Editions fiction is is published with these solid blue colors um, which I think are really lovely and uh, so this is the story of a man named Oshla who is an artist and uh, he lives quite a reclusive life although he has a neighbor that he has some interactions with and uh, this takes place just before Christmas when he and his neighbor get together for uh, a Christmas meal. Uh, but also this artist has a doppelganger um, who lives nearby that is much less successful than he is and has had a lot of strife in his life. And so they're kind of two figures uh, that can their, their memories and experiences of the past kind of blend together or they kind of show how an individual's life can diverge and in two very different and dramatic ways uh, but the way the style of this novel is such that kind of memories uh, kind of blend in with the present and can be physically seen and uh, and it's it's quite an interesting writing style um, which is quite meditative and 
philosophical. Um, I've still only read the first part of the, the trilogy, so I am really excited to go back and read the, the second book and then this third book and see how the, the different perspectives that are given over the course of the books and and how points of view about the past change um, through the the different sections so i think it's going to be a really fascinating and wondrous journey. Heaven by Miko Kawakami and it's translated from the Japanese by Samuel Bett and David Boyd and this is such an emotional story about a 14 year old boy that is ruthlessly bullied by other people in his class uh, although he meets a girl that is also uh, relentlessly bullied and they form a, a kind of friendship with each other uh, although they have very different reactions to being bullied and interpretations of what it means and and how they think they should react to it and uh it is and any story about like bullying i think is like absolutely heartbreaking to see adolescents going through this but the way that kawakami examines this experience and the meaning of it and the impact it has on people over over time i i think is so moving and i'm really glad that this has been listed for this prize because i first read this last summer and and thinking about it again it's just made me recall so many powerful things uh, about it so i think it's it's a novel that on the surface it seems like quite a simple story but actually it has quite a complex message and its meaning um, is really resonant and finally the books of jacob by olga tokorczyk translated from the polish by jennifer croft a novel which fictionalizes the life of a real historical man named jacob frank uh, who was born uh, in, in the 18th century uh, uh, to a Jewish family. Uh, and he, as he grew up, he was a self proclaimed messiah uh, who also converted to Catholicism and Islam and gathered around him quite a following of people but he was also denounced as a heretic and so had a very varied and controversial life the story examines his life from a lot of different points of view uh, it sounds like such a fascinating story but yeah it's quite a big commitment to get through and i know a lot of people have been reading it over the winter months and i am really looking forward to delving into it and just getting completely immersed in this story. So those are the six books on the shortlist. Like I said, I'd love to know if you're planning on reading any of these books. If you have read any of them, please let me know your thoughts about them in the comments below. I'd be wonderful to have a chat about them. I am hoping and planning to, to read all these books before the winner is amount, announced on May 26th. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll get to them all before that. But yeah, lots of reading time ahead of me. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be really good and so very excited about it. I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.